Hey, man. So, right, Z, me, man, let's start from the top, brother. Where you from? Uh, from Alliance, Ohio. Okay. Born and raised. That's what's up. Um, background, you know what I'm saying? I was raised by my grandmother and my grandfather. Uh, so my mom and my dad wasn't there. So, you know, they did everything they could to make ends meet. You know, very thankful. You know what I'm saying? I lost my I lost my grandfather uh back in 06. My condolences. So thank you. I appreciate it. And uh my grandmother's still around, but we was deep though, man. Like it was it's eight of us. All the grandma house. Yeah, it's eight of us, man. So shout out to all my brothers and my sister, you know what I'm saying? So we all stuck together. We all we had. See, those those people who were like was raised by the grandparents, that's a different type of parenting. <laughs> yeah, Cause man, like yeah. grandparents don't play. Nah. So I know grandma wasn't playing with you. Yeah, nah. No, nah, not at all. It was, if you got in trouble, it was go outside and get, get the switch. Get the switch. <laughs> get the switch. And if you got a small one, then they went out there and got the right one. Man, that's see, man, he got the OG grandma. I love your grandma already. <laughs> my man. grandma was a whatever's within arm's reach. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, that's like too. it could be the shoe, it could be the broom, it could clothes, be the remote, clothes hanger, whatever it was. <laughs> so growing up in the Alliance, man, um, what was it like for you? Oh, it was smooth. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy. We weren't really. We weren't really allowed off the porch, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, just grandma shit. Yeah, yeah, whatever grandma and grandpa said. Yes, sir. You know, but yeah, you know, once I lost my grandfather in uh, 06, it was kind of like that's when I jumped off the porch. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, my grandma, she not about to chase all these little boys around. Yeah, you know I'm, I'm 12, 13. You know, I jumped off the porch and I was just in the streets, man, hanging with the wrong people. I was hanging with all the OGs and whatnot. So I'm like. I want to be like them, you know, running around wearing my brother's clothes that's hanging off my shoulders and whatnot. So, <laughs> he had the tall T on. Yeah, yeah, he had the tall T. So, but it was cool. It wasn't nothing too bad. But a lot of people knew that, like, I got into boxing at 13 years old, you know, and I only, I only did it for, like, a few months. And then a lot of people seen, like, the potential that I had, and it was like, nah, bro, you need to go home. Like, don't, mm. don't be out here with us. Don't be, you know what I'm saying? Because I was more so, like, trying to fit in with everybody. Right. I was trying to do what everybody was doing. They smoke cigarettes. I want to smoke cigarettes. They drink. I want to drink. You know what I'm saying? So eventually it came a time where I was like, this is what you want to do. You got to do it. You got to lock in. You know what I'm saying? What was that like moment for you when you realized that was your passion that you knew like, this is what I want to do? Was it like a fight that you may have a training session? I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. It was like I was always fighting as a kid, but I was like, I got bully you know what I'm saying like verbally it wasn't more so like nobody beat me up it was more so like oh he got on Stephen Berry's or he got on you know what I'm saying yeah. boo-boos so they cracking on me whatnot so I'm like I don't like bullies respect I want to beat the bullies up <laughs> so that's that's kind of one yeah right and right that's kind of right. one of the reasons why I really got into it and then my uncle was doing it too and then I heard all the stories about him traveling the world he lived in Jamaica and Texas and this and that I'm like he traveling the world for free because his hands and I'm like I want to do that so your uncle was fighting professionally yeah yeah he uh he was ranked like number two in the world back in the day uh, he fought Oscar De La Hoya at the Olympic Festival uh 98 who's your uncle uh, Desi Fort that's what's up yeah. so he had that experience of yeah. like yeah. really going around the world with boxing yeah really traveling like seeing it all so I'm just like I want to do that so and that's what what got me into it for real and then I ain't really start like I started at 13 learning the fundamentals and just j learning how to jump rope and whatnot and then when I turned 17 I got back into it and then I was like yeah this is what I want to do so earlier you uh you know when you asked the question like do you think you guys could spar in front of people I didn't really think about it until then but like what's the thought process going into a fight like because it's like you said, it, it's it's both. You're fighting and entertaining people. Yeah. So, like, what when you go in, like, you, okay, yeah, I'm about to fight this guy. Like, what are you going into it thinking, like, on both aspects, like from the fight and entertainment of the crowd? Um, in a sense, entertaining the crowd kind of goes out the window. But, like, until you start really, like, throwing punches, then you know. Like, once you fill them out and you got that little vibe and you know that you like, all right, yeah, I got this guy. Like, I can get away with this yeah. if I do. Okay, yeah. right. So right. now it's like, all right, now it's, you can entertain a little bit. Start showboat. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Is, 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 do you feel there's a place for that in the ring, for showboating a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you got to really, you got to real life, like, be getting your stuff off, though. Like, I'm like, hit and don't be hit. And if you're getting away with that for, like, two, three rounds, then you, like, 
you got say you got six rounds or eight rounds or whatever, and then you just getting off with that for three rounds and it's working. Now you know you like all right. I can have my way. I can do whatever I want in here. Right, but you gotta like stab that, that, that. Like you said, that comes after filling out your opponent and everything, yeah. being sure you ain't about to show up and get knocked out. So yeah, you do yeah, it. yeah, for the show. That'd be embarrassing. Cause you yeah. gotta be you gotta be smart about it, man. It's 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 a it's a thinking man sport. You know what I'm saying? So Don't play it's, it's more mental than it is physical. Yeah, that's a question I want to ask you. What's the big misconception about being a boxer? A lot of people think just like we like just go in there and just rock them, sock them robots, but no, nah, it goes a lot into it. Like you really got to be thinking, like you got to be smart. It's like playing chess. 